Divisional playoff game between the Bears and the visiting New York Giants. With me, of course, is John Madden. And John, given those wind conditions, weather conditions we just talked about, how tough is it going to be to throw the football? I think it's going to be tough, but I also think it's great. You know, but when they when the wind is coming this way and you're going that way, it gets just about impossible to throw on this field. But I think both teams are ready for that. I know that they feel that they have to run and they have to stop to run. In talking to the Bears, they say to beat the Giants, we have to stop number 20, Joe Morris. And then you talk to the Giants, and they say, if we're going to beat the Bears, we're going to have to stop Walter Payton. John, is another factor. These two teams come into this game totally differently prepared. The Bears had that week off. The Giants had a tough match last week with San Francisco. Is that week off for the Bears, the extra rest, how much of an advantage is that going to be? I don't know if that's an advantage. You know, sometimes when you can keep things rolling, it's not bad. And that's what the Giants are doing. They haven't had a lot of time to think about this game. They had a very physical game last week. They regrouped, they practiced, they flew in here last night, they're out on the field, and I know they're ready. Now the Bears, on the other hand, they had more time to think about it. They had two weeks. Last week they went to Suwannee, Georgia, and they had just about a training camp. They would meet in the morning, practice in the afternoon, meet at night, 11 o'clock curfew. Mike Ditka says, this team is antsy. So what we have is a team, the Giants, that really haven't had a chance to think about this game against a team, the Bears, that have a long time to think about it, and they're antsy. Well, the Bears are lined up in their kickoff formation. That's Kevin Butler. The Giants won the toss and elected to receive. Lee Roussan is number 22, back in the middle for the Giants. Ben Dreith is the referee. The Giants will be fighting that gusty wind. Adams is back on Roussan's left. Tony Galbraith is over on his right. Ball blew off the tee. Butler got it reset. And the kick sails to Roussan at the five. He dropped it. Some room, Roussan gets out to the 20, stopped by Reggie Phillips. And the Giants will take over at their own 20. Going into the wing will be Phil Sims, the quarterback, Joe Morris, and Rob Carpenter, the runners, Bobby Johnson, and Lionel Manuel, the wide receivers. Up front, it's Benson Ard Oates, Godfrey Nelson, and the tight end, Mark Bavaro. Roussan got it right back to the 20. Morris is the deep back. Here comes Manuel in motion. Sims to Morris on first down. He gets about six. Gary Fensick made the stop. The Bear defense, the league's best. Hampton, McMichael, the refrigerator, William Perry, and Richard Dent. Otis Wilson, Mike Singletary, and Wilbur Marshall, the linebackers. The secondary has Richardson and Frazier on the corners, and Dewerson and Fensick, the safety men. Second down. Morris breaks a tackle, gets into the Bears secondary. All the way to the 40-yard line before Steve McMichael can get him down from behind. A gain of 14, a giant first down. Well, Joe Morris said last night, he said, we think that we can run against this Bear defense. A lot of people just look at it and they haven't even tried. Of course, the Bears haven't played against Joe Morris. Now, he's tough. You see, he comes out there, they don't steal. When they finally see him, boom, he's right up there on top of him. Morris only 5'7", but he is strong. Manuel is the move man. Sims to Morris again. This time there's nothing to it. Mike Singletary in the middle. Gary Fensick with the assist. No game. Well, they played that cutback well. That's one of the things the Bear defense is talking about. That with Morris, you can't over-pursue. When he starts one way, you have to stay behind him because he'll start that way and then zip, just cut right back. Second and ten. Giants at their own 40-yard line. The opening series of the game. Giants operate now with three wide receivers. Here comes a bear blitz. Wide open in the middle is Rob Carpenter. He fumbles. And the Bears get it back, I believe. Chicago ball.
Vinatieri made the recovery. You know, the Bear defense looks like they weren't ready here. They were worried about the three wide receivers all adjusting. No one covered Rob Carpenter. He sneaked through the line and then boom, caught that ball. And you see what happened as he started to run with it. That's the toughest thing is that guy coming from behind and hitting your arm. Bear first down, their own 49. Jim McMahon, the quarterback. Both wide receivers are to the right. This is McKinnon in motion. McMahon to pick. Pick up of four. Harry Carson on the stop. The Bear offense. McMahon, the quarterback. Peyton and Suey, the runners. Galt and McKinnon, the wide receivers. The offensive line has Covert, Bortz, Hilgenberg, Thayer, Van Horn, and Emery Moorhead starting at tight end. Second down at six from the Giant 47. Sui. Again, it's Peyton. Inside the 45 to about the 43. The Giant defensive unit. McGriff, Burt, and Leonard Marshall. The linebackers Hunt, Reasons, Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. And in the secondary, Patterson, who was injured last week, but back starting. And Perry Williams, the cornerbacks, and Kenny Hill and Terry Kennard, the safeties. Third down and two. Warhead moves to the other side. Again, Peyton. Don't believe he got it. Carson met him right at the pass. Hey, that was some collision right there on that, on that side when Peyton was coming. This will be an interesting call. It'll be fourth down. Of course, they're either going to have to go for it or punt. There's no way they could kick a field goal from this distance. It would be a 60-yarder. And on a cold day like this, that would be a tough assignment. So it is, as you said, a punt. Maury Buford averaging 42.4. Phil McConkey back giant back to the Giants. That's a pretty tough sun that McConkey will be looking into. Well into the end zone and out. And it'll come back to the 20. 43-yard punt. And Phil Sims in the offense of the Giants will return. That'll give you a pretty good idea that it's not a warm, sunny day. Temperature when the game started was 12 degrees. And with the wind chill factor, it feels like it's minus 13. And that wind is tough down there on the field. Well, that's the biggest thing. I know, you know, the, the players feel that once the game starts and you get running around and the adrenaline, you're pumping, cold doesn't bother you. But wind does, and it affects what you can do with the ball. First and 10 Giants from their own 20. It's Morris again to the outside. Morris ducks under a couple of bears. Oh, there's Wilson. And Mike Richardson come up to make the stop. Interesting. Well, one of those things would have to give, you would assume. <laughs> the Giants, if they're going to rush for 153 yards, then the Bears' defense isn't going to do what they've done. They only got a yard on that carry. So that makes it second and nine from the 21. Three wide receivers, I beg your pardon. It's just two, but a new one, a conky. Morris cut back, was cut down by fencing. You know, it's an interesting thing that this Bear defense does in their defensive coordinator, Buddy Ryan, working with fencing, is they take a couple of series to decide what they're going to do. They give different defenses, different looks, and they have players on the sideline assigned to watch guy. Then they finally figure out what they can do, what the other team can't block, and that's what they go with in the game. And the Giants come out of the spread now. As McConkey in motion. Here comes Otis Wilson all over Sims. Incomplete. 
Sam just barely got rid of it. Yeah, that was an interesting defense back that the that the Bears haven't used. See, they only have three defensive linemen, but in the Bear look. Then they have the linebackers. This is Otis Wilson over here. He's going to come from this side on the blitz. See, they usually have the four defensive linemen. Here they only have three. They stunt to the outside. There goes Otis Wilson. Landetta's kick comes to Keith Ortigo. Ortigo gets back to about the 41 where the Bears will take over with 9.01 left to play in the first quarter. 40-yard punt by Sean Landetta. A return of five. You can see those giant coaches talking about it on the sideline. What they did is they showed the Bear look. It usually has four defensive linemen, but it was only three defensive linemen. Linebackers on both sides. See, they're trying to say it was a bear. They said it was a bear, and they said, no, it wasn't a bear. They call it the diamond, Yeah. the so-called bear look. But it's a fake diamond right. is what it is. What's right. those fake diamonds called? Zircon, I think. Yeah, Zircon. It's a Zircon. Outside the paper. And Peyton struggles for about six yards. Gary Reason's on the stop. Bears all-time leading rusher, of course, but also the all-time leading receiver. And he's probably also the also leading running back that throws the ball and leading running back that blocks and leading guy that does everything on this team. Whatever category you can come up with. Peyton would be the leader. Football player is a pretty good category. That's not bad. McMahon starts in in motion again. Gives to Peyton, who's piled up by Marshall. And Burt. And the rest of the middle of the giant defense. He used old Matt Suey as an extra pulling guard. Watch Leonard Marshall get off the block here at Jim Covert. See, he gets into him, gets both hands on him, reads the play, and right down the line of scrimmage. That's what Leonard Marshall has improved so oh, much boy. over the years, and that's one of the areas, being able to see the difference between run and pass and react to it. The Giants are expecting pass now. They've got their pass rush unit in there, which includes George Martin at left end. The handoff is to Peyton. Behind the blocker, Peyton doesn't get the first down. Elvis Patterson and Harry Carson were the first to arrive. You know, I'm surprised. Uh, you know, this game started, to, it's a conservative start in a football game. We have yet to see our first forward pass. Uh, I know the Bears like to run in that situation uh, to Peyton, but you think that wouldn't have been a bad passing uh, down there because it wasn't third and long and you had the wind with you. You think if you're going to do it, you would have done it in that situation. Buford in the punt for the Bears. McConkey back deep for the Giants. That one will stay up there a long time. McConkey feels it. Dodges one there. And Matt Suey brought him down. 34-yard punt by Buford. McConkey brought it back five. Nothing, nothing. First quarter with 6.39 left. Pat Summerall, John Madden. We're at Soldier Field in Chicago. Nothing, nothing to score between the Bears and the Giants. You know, there's something to this. You know, these playoff games. And they usually, because of the finality, they usually get a lot more conservative play. It seems it happens every year. Sims Tavares on first down. No Morris around the corner. Stopped by Otis Wilson. Wilbur Marshall with an assist. He just got two. The Giants have the fifth best offense in the NFL. The Bears the best defense in the NFL. Something's got to give. There's that Zircon defense again, that phony diamond, the three defensive yep. linemen, linebackers on either side. Watch for the blitz. Those two guys on the outside, watch them. Watch Durson. Durson started, then backed off. 
Giants get it outside. Sims just threw it away. In the direction of Carpenter. See, here's the thing. I'm talking about the diamond. Here's the thing they call the diamond. But there's usually a fourth. Now there's only three. Here's Dorson. Here's the guy that comes from the outside. You see, it's only a three-man line. Dorson gets up and fake. Here comes Wilson from this side. Marshall coming from up on the top side. Of course, that is a little confusing. Look, the, the, giant, the Giants haven't seen this because it's the first time the Bears have played it, and they're in it again. Third and long, third and eight. Sims from the spread. Here comes the blitz again. That's Richard Dent, though. It was not a blitz. It was just a three-man rush with a stud up front. See, now they're all talking about how good this defense is. What it is, see, here's the three linemen. Here's Dent, here's Hampton, here's McMichael. This is the guy that finally gets him. You see the three-man line is stunt. Dent starts from the right side, comes out, loops out to the left, gets right up the middle, and fills Sims' face. And Landetta stands back in his end zone. Hardy go. The kick is blocked. Durson picked it up, I believe. Not sure who got it yet. Sean Gale, number 23, scored the touchdown. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure anybody hit that ball. He just he just missed it off the side of his foot. I don't I don't think it was blocked. I think it was more of a shank job or just a miss. You know, sometimes the wind can affect a drop. Butler for the extra point. Fuller the holder. Bears lead it 7-0. Sometimes playoff pressure can affect drops. Let's just see if we can see it here. I don't think there was anyone blocked there. See, he just, no, that's just a shame. He just hit that ball. I mean, he dropped it, and he didn't kick it where you normally do. Watch this. Watch how low the ball is before it hits his foot. He starts here. Look, it's already, it's almost to the ground. He just dropped that ball and missed it. That's the old miss. Now, the wind could have something, you know, as the what? ball dropped, the wind could have moved it a little. The drop looks so funny. It was an end-over-end end drop. I know, and it was too low. I wonder, he's explaining there, so they always have the reason for it, but maybe the ball fell off his hand. The wind is blowing, or was blowing, almost directly in Landetta's face. Look at this again. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I mean, a guy drops the ball and misses it. It doesn't even look like he touched it. Well, you know, it looks like a funny drop. It looks yeah. like it was a low drop, but he also dropped it too far out in front of him. I, I agree with you. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I'll tell you one thing. Wind does psych out kickers. I talked to Lindetta on the field before the game. He told me he says you can't kick in this weather. Butler to Roussin. Lee Roussin on the kickoff return. It's a good one. Out to the 45. Out of bounds is Lee Roussin by Reggie Phillips. You know, it's funny in these games, you talk about offense, defense, Peyton Morris, Stop, McMahon, Sim and Holding. And it usually boils down to something like that, a special teams play. You know, a block punt, or in this case, the punter misses the ball. You and I have seen a lot of football games, and I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. I never could punt. You know, I mean, I was one of those kids that was always chunky and never got to punt much, but when I did, I never, I never had one like that. Sims to throw on first down. Gets it outside. The Mark Pajaro. Pajaro gets about eight to the Bear 45 before Durison takes him down. A gain of eight. I think Bill Parcells told us last night is that, that the Giants are not going to play a conservative offensive game. 
If they're going to come out, they're going to throw, they're going to throw on first down, and they're going to have a plan and not tighten up when they get in the playoff or against the Bears. We're going to take some shots, he said. Second down and short. Morris doesn't get it. Wilbur Marshall breaks down Joe Morris. That's the thing. You just have to get him blocked on that play. We'll see Wilbur Marshall right here coming off the thing. They just didn't get him blocked. He comes up there. He's putting pressure off the corner, and they're not counting him. They're trying to dive inside him, but if he's coming tough off that corner, someone has to turn out on him. You have to get a man on him. Third and about a yard and a half. Maurice Carthen now joins Morris. He's the blocker. And he got a good block. Richard Dent from behind brings down Morris short of the first down. Here, yeah, here's Richard Dent. Watch him. He's all the way at the top. Comes all the way across the field. The guy that held it up was 55, Otis Wilson. He stopped him, and then Dent was able to get behind and make the play. Let's see if Sean Landetta can get the ball to drop on his foot. <laughs> no laughing matter. A good high kick. He caught all that one. Or to go signals, fair catch. The Giants are down in good shape and down it inside the 10. A punt of 36 yards. The Bears will take over at their own nine, leading 7-0 with 3.07 left to play first quarter. 3.07 left to play in the first quarter. And the Bears, touchdown by Sean Gale, the most unusual one. Bears ball their own nine yard line. Leading 7 0. Jim Burt looking into the backfield. McMahon asks for quiet. For Willie Galt. Galt to about the 34, stopped by Terry Kennard, a pickup of 25. I think Jim McMahon took a shot after he threw that ball, too, but McMahon was saying one thing, Willie Galt has to have a game for us today. He said the other night in a meeting, Mike Ditka told him right in the middle of the milling, he said, we need you, Willie Galt. Watch the shot that McMahon takes right here. He's thrown the ball, the ball's gone, Kenny Hill comes in from a strong safety blitz. Here comes Ooh. A new look on Giant defense. That's Lawrence Taylor in the middle. And two linebackers down. That's Burt. Now this is the, the version that the Giants are giving. Let's see if we can see this again, how Lawrence Taylor gets in here. They put Harry Carson up in the line as a defensive lineman. Gary Reason's on the other side. And right in here behind is Lawrence Taylor playing the middle linebacker. See, they cover all the linemen, and Lawrence Taylor is right in behind. You see, 56 here, where they can't block him because they cover everyone. Nobody can get to him. Taylor moves to the outside this time. And Suey moves in front of him. McMahon back to throw. McMahon will run with him. And slide. Harry Carson. Made sure he stayed down as McMahon scrambled for a first down. Uh, Jim McMahon jumped up and started pointing. You know, it was funny. The guy who was going to make the play on him was Kenny Hill, who had blitzed him and hit him after he threw the ball earlier to Willie Gall. You know, that's one thing about McMahon. When he goes back to pass, he's looking for his receivers. But in doing that, if you ever give him an open lane and he can see clear running room, he's always going to take it. He took it for 10 and a first down for the Bears. Their own 47. McKinnon wide right, Galt wide left. A 
draw play to Peyton, caught from behind by Marshall. Let's see who else is under the bottom of that pile. Curtis McGriff. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. That play that Leonard Marshall made there was just like the one that Richard Dent made. And the thing that I like about both of these guys is they were the leading two sackers in the league, but they also play the run. Watch Leonard Marshall there. You see, he tries to cut him right down the line and makes a play from behind against Peyton. Dent did the same thing earlier, making the play from behind on the opposite side of the field. Second and nine. McMahon back. Hit by Marshall again. He's going deep for Galt, who hasn't hit him in the hands and bounce away. Perry Williams was back there with him. McMahon again under pressure. They won that Willie Galt can run, but Perry Williams can also run. Perry Williams got turned around on that play. Galt was coming to the inside. He just got one hand up. And that's the end of the first quarter with the Bears leading 7-0. The Bears now operating against the wind. And as we said earlier, it's gusting up to about 22, 25 miles an hour. The Bears going against it now. Third down and nine. McMahon to the cannon. He'll have the first down with an extra surge. Stopped by Elvis Patterson. A gain of eight. The Bears really had their four wide receivers in here. And we watch McKinnon. He starts to the outside, lets the other guys come inside him. Then he comes back to the inside against Elvis Patterson. Patterson injured a week ago. Worked out this week. He looked pretty good on that side. play. We're going to decline a penalty. First down. While we were in that replay, a good five or ten seconds after the play was over, the yellow flag came flying out. You know, when the play happened, I thought someone was offsides. It looked like someone on that right side, like in the area of Leonard Marshall, jumped offsides, and I didn't see a flag. Maybe, maybe it got got uh, uh, frozen in his pocket. Maybe. In any case, they decline the penalty, and it's a bare first down. Hand off to Suey for the first time today. Lawrence Taylor on the tackle, but Suey got six. You know, an interesting play here. You hardly ever see this, Pat, but. Jay Hilgenberg, who made the Pro Bowl this year, is one of the few centers that can do this. He snaps the ball, then he pulls down and kicks out to his right. Now, you never see that, especially when the center's covered. Bring the guard down, there's Hilgenberg. He comes down on Hunt, and they run inside. That's the kind of respect that these Bears have for the things that Hilgenberg can do. Boy, get out of there in a hurry. With a nose tackle over him. So he on the move again, and McMahon, side arms one, to Suey. Looks like it'll be short of the first down. A gain of only three. Lawrence Taylor's there talking to Matt Suey. That was his man. That was that special defense of the Giants that time. They call it Fire Lion Zero. And here we can see it, and we can see that the linebackers are down. That's when Lawrence Taylor plays as a middle linebacker. Here he's having so he's going after him, saying, I got you. Touch tackle. Third and about a foot. Eight in motion this time, and the pitch is back to Suri, who has the first down. Moves inside the giant 30. A gain of five. Carl Banks on the stop. They both feel they have to be able to run. Their head coach, Mike Ditka. Well, you know, that's the type of thing that usually goes. Usually, a good running game goes with a strong defense. And you figure that you want to run, you want to control the ball, 
don't do anything stupid, don't take a lot of chances, and you know, don't let your offense make mistakes and lose the game for you, and let your defense win it for you. Golf split wide to the left. Peyton again in motion. Juggled it, but held on. Lawrence Taylor made the stop. Mike Ditka and Jim McMahon were both saying yesterday that one of Willie Golf's problem is confidence. And we're saying that I hope the first time we throw him the ball, he catches it. Because if he does, then he gets the confidence. Then they can keep throwing the ball. You see, that time he did something that he hadn't been doing a lot all year. Catching the ball out in front not letting it get into his body where it can hit his shoulder pads and bounce out. Marjoram is now the man in motion. McMahon under pressure again. Throws for McKinnon, incomplete. Under pressure from Taylor. Jim McMahon was saying that he and Ken Marjoram who's a backup wide receiver in the Bears, he said, we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> and he said, Mike Ditka's told us about Marjorie. He said, you never know where that guy's going. He's from <laughs> California, you know. And they kind of do what they want. And the man says, yeah. Same he and Marjorie are same wavelength. <laughs> that time they work. Ditka's not on their wavelength. Those two guys are on one, and Mike Ditka's on another. Second and 10 from the 13. Couple. Lawrence Taylor again on the bottom of the pile. You know, one reason that the, you know, the other reason that the Bears don't pass a lot, or one of the reasons, they really haven't solidified their pass protection. Because every time McMahon's gone back, there's been guys hanging on around him pretty good. So they got to get that settled down before they go into a lot of passing. Been a good looking drive, hasn't it? Kept it a little bit over seven minutes. Third and seven. Here at the ten. McMahon on a rollout throws back to Suey. Who just barely got it off the turf. Suey from behind by Harry Carson. And the Bears will have to settle for a field goal attempt by Kevin Butler. Well, that was going to be their big play. What they did is they rolled or sprinted to the right and screamed back there to Suey. In other words, the lineman pulled left, Suey went left, McMahon went right. Mike Ditka says, with all that stuff, guys going left, guys going right, half a package here, half a package there, we should have at least gotten the first down. This will be for about 20, 27 yards, 26. The end of the win by Kevin Butler. He's had a great year. Wide to Butler's left. And no good. So the Bears put together a good drive, but get nothing out of it. 7-0. The Bears over the Giants. With nine and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Bears 13-17 in time of possession. The Giants 7-12. 7-0. Morris is split wide to the right this time. Sims with the wind at his back. And pressure all over it. Ball is on the ground. Richard Gent was one of the Bears who... It's a loss of 12. The Bears are saying we got it. What it was, it was Otis Wilson coming into Sims' face. Dent coming from the backside. Sims did fumble the ball. I guess he must have ended up with it. But Otis Wilson was coming on a blitz from into Sims. This is a backside. 95 Dent is coming from his backside. See Wilson there? Wilson gets there first. Dent gets there. The ball is fumbled. The Giants must have recovered it. Sims must have gotten it back himself. And they were lucky. Second down and 22. Carlton in the backfield with Morris. And the handoff is to Morris. He's around the corner. Outside the 10 to about the 13 before 
Leslie Frazier. Here's that last play. Watch it. Here comes Wilson to this side. Dent from the back side. Dent strips the ball. Watch him now. Right hand just goes and he hits the ball, knocks it right out of Sims's hand. I don't know who recovered that. It, it had to be the giant. There it, it went, is. It went between Sims's legs and it rolls right back into him. I'll tell you, that was a lucky break. Oh, yeah. Third and 17. Sims going for a bundle. Bobby Johnson was the intended receiver. Leslie Frazier right back there with him. Most people think that the way to beat that Bear defense is if you can block them, you can work on the two cornerbacks. The problem is getting them blocked. That's Dan Hampton. You know, Dan Hampton has hand and finger troubles and has had numerous operations on those. In fact, he said he would rather have healthy hands and bad knees than bad knees and healthy hands. Ornico will field Landetta's hunt. And the Giants are down in a hurry. Keith Ornico breaks a couple of tackles. The Bears will take over at their own 40. There is Hampton. Elbows scraped, hands bleeding. Look at all the bandages on that. Calvin Thomas has replaced Suey. And he gets the carry. He gets the attention of Harry Carson and Carl Banks in a gain of five. Bears leading 7-0. A gain of five. Second and five. Second and five make it. Bear defense, a bear offense rather, than the giant defense. The average during 1985's regular season. Second and five right here. Bears operating from their own 45. Pretty good move. Aiden only got one. Carl Banks again on the bottom of the pile. This is a tough thing. You know, I think sometimes when you run on first down, you like to create that second and four, second and five situation. And then when the Bears did, you would think that that would be a good passing down. Like Lawrence Taylor got stung a little on that last play. You know, one thing about being cold, when you get stung a little, it stings more than stung a little. I mean, it's stung when it's, you know, like 10 degrees, stung a little stungs a lot. It lasts longer. Third down. McMahon out of the spread. Caught by golf. Harry Williams, the defender. Golf came back to it. Then he made a great adjustment. The ball was underthrown. He is going on a deep pattern up. He's trying to get by Perry Williams here. Now the ball's thrown. He sees it. Williams doesn't yet. Williams keeps going. Galt is able to stop and catch the ball. I tell you, that's pretty good. You know, Willie Galt, of course, has great speed. I mean, he's probably the fastest man in the NFL, or one of the fastest men in the NFL. That has never been his problem. Catching the ball has been his problem. What he did at 85, he has three today for 68 yards. Oh. First down, Bears at the Giant 25. They pretty much control the first half. Reverse coming to McKinnon. Chased by Marshall. McKinnon gets away from the first one. Uh, Jim Burt is out there along with Lawrence Taylor. I'll tell you one thing, Jim McMahon, whether he got a block on, on uh, Marshall or not, it was a pretty good thing. Well, watch this. The ball starts here. Reverse comes back. McMahon, the quarterback, starts out here. He gets a little block right here, and the reverse gets by. But whether McMahon made a block or not, the fact that he tried to see the reverse, there's McMahon up there Watch. He says, I got you, Marshall. Boom, I'll cut you. That's not a bad little deal for a quarterback. Certainly not. But, you know, he's a different type of quarterback anyway. This guy's a different guy. That's something to do with that wavelength you were talking he's about. He's on another wavelength. Here's McMahon, Chase. 
Gets away from one man, is hit down by Harry Carson. Andy Hedden was the first one to put the pressure. McMahon got one. Total offense so far. The Bears, as I said, very much in control of the first half. 4.23 left to play. You know, one thing about McMahon, though, I always liked that type of quarterback. I don't think that you can have a quarterback who who uh, is a normal guy. I mean, that's not a normal position. They don't do normal things. And I don't think there's been many great ones that have been normal. I can't remember. Roger Staubach's probably the closest, but he had a few quirks. Here's McMahon. Going for McKinnon. He can't come up with it. Elvis Patterson back there with him. Again, it was underthrown. His receivers are adjusting well, though. He's overthrowing some, underthrowing some. Even McKinnon, you see, he stops. He lets Patterson go by, jumps up, and just can't keep a hold of that thing. Ditka was saying they're going to throw the ball at the sidelines because they didn't think that uh, where Terry Kennard plays is the free safety he can get over to help out. That's the way to get deep. They think that, you know, by keeping the ball outside that they can do that. Kevin Butler will try from 49 yards out. No. Flag is down. Penalty marker down. That whole thing was surprising, that whole deal, because it looked like they were going to punt and then they switched to a field goal and they were kicking that long one into the wind it never did have a chance i don't think the bear Offense. team was set. illegal motion number 71 decline a penalty it's first down the other way and they'll bring the ball back to the line of scrimmage and the giants dodge another bullet you know that play doesn't look like a lot but that was a big big play because now they get the two minute warning the bears got the first down the giants we're trying to take the timeouts, get the ball back, get them pinned down, make them punt into the wind. Instead, Peyton got 11. McMahon comes over for a visit. And I think you see, when this, this is why Peyton's Peyton. You know, that when you need that play, you need the big play, you have to get off the goal line, you have to get out of trouble, you give it to Walter. Just gets out, makes a couple cuts, gets it up the sideline, and gets a first down for him. 11 years, and he's only failed to start one game in those 11 years. And that's amazing. And I think when you talk to other players about Walter Payton, and I know Joe Morris was saying it last night, he says, he said, I really don't have idols. He said, but I'll tell you, I respect Walter Payton more than anyone because I know what it's like to go through it a couple of years. And this guy's been doing it for 11 years, and in those 11 years, there was only one game that he didn't start. Joe Morris has his, you know, shoulder and ribs and knee, all the stuff he's done. He said, I have no idea how that guy's done it. Is that a tribute to you, I believe? Nah, nah, nah. No? This bears fever. They're wild here. These people in Chicago, I mean, people that never talk about football. They haven't been football fans. They all do have this bear fever stuff going. This time, I mean, they, they, have, they have dances and songs and... And everywhere, oh, everywhere yeah. you look, you see the bear colors. Not just at the stadium. On first down. Hayden again. He is cut off by Banks. And let's see if Bill Parcells takes another timeout now. He has two left. I think after they got that first down, Bill Parcell said that it's not as good a deal as it would have been before. I don't think they're going to take the time out. I think that he feels pretty comfortable. They can just let the Bears run out the clock here and go in just down seven to nothing. That's really not a bad position. Dennis Gentry checks in and lines up on the flank to the left side. Calvin Thomas is the other back. Now Gentry comes back even with him. Reitman in motion. Pitches back to Calvin Thomas. And nothing there for him. 
That'll bring up a third down situation, and now they might take another timeout. Kenny Hill came up to make the stop. Now it's starting to look a little better because you, you know, you stop them there. Now they're going to be in third and long, so now you do use your timeout. And they have one remaining. I see Soldier Field. Jim Burt really got sandwiched on the last play. Watch this. Well, it's his own guy. Watch Jim Burt, 64. Harry Carson comes in right here. You don't see it. It's right after that. His own guy, Harry Carson, hit him in the back. Third and eight from the 20. 106 left to play in the first half. Marjoram in motion. They give on a draw play to Jeffrey. And he gets nothing. Lost a yard, perhaps. And the now, Giants will use their last timeout. Right, and now the Giants have to take their timeout. And it's not bad. I wouldn't be surprised making that guy punt into the wind and they come with some pressure on him. Well, you saw what happened earlier to Landetta when he was punting out of his end zone into the wind. And you know the other thing that Bill Parcells could have reminded Phil McConkey about: if it's a short kick, take a feel, uh, uh, take a fair catch. You know, don't don't do anything. If we can get the ball inside that 40, take a fair catch. Because then you get a free kick. Maury Buford, the Bear punter, punting into the wind. Phil McConkey will be back deep. So the Giants should get pretty good field position here. That's the good news. The bad news is they really haven't gotten that pass protection down yet. And they've used all their timeouts. You're right. They haven't been able to protect Sims. They came after him. Ball bounces back to the Bear, 45, and they finally down it about the 46. A punt of 26 yards. Giants yards passing. None. They completed one pass to Carpenter, but he fumbled. Since then, it's been nothing doing. Sims brings him out at the 45. They go with three wide receivers, and Sims operates out of the shotgun. Crowd is loud. Here comes Hampton after. Pass is caught by George Adams. Adams inside the bear, 20 down, out of bounds at the 14. Clock stops with 42 seconds remaining. Frazier brought him down, a gain of 31. Well, they did the thing that they wanted to. They got their back on a linebacker. That was Mike Singletary, the middle linebacker. He had to cover, cover George Adams. Sim sees it, he gets the rush. Here's Adams, there's Singletary. Covering him, he gets a beat. Singletary can't catch up with him. And Adams gets the ball down to the 14-yard line. Sims did a good job of getting that ball there because Hampton was right in his face. They operate from the spread again. Durson showing blitz, and there he comes. Sims rolls out right. Sims in the end zone. Incomplete intended for McConkey. Sean Gale was back there with him. Sims under pressure from Durson. Well, the Giants had the had the right play call there because Durson was coming on a, on a blitz. He's coming from this side up here. Sims takes the ball and rolls out to this side, and he's able to get outside. See, right behind the goal pass. See, here comes Durson. Sim says, I see that coming. Pack them all in there, and I'll sprint out to the right and buy some time. He had McConkey open, too. Yes, he did. We're behind him. 36 seconds remain in the first half. Here comes the bear blitz again. Pass is incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. Now it took five seconds. Sims has really been running for his life. Well, one thing you can be assured of with Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator of the Bears, if he blitzes you and it works, or if he blitzes you and you become unsettled, 
you are going to get a heavy, heavy dose of blitz. It's a false start on the offense, number 60. Brad Please Benson. put five seconds back on the clock. Five seconds. But she left tackle out there. You see number 60, Brad Benson. He saw the blitz coming. They had the overload, the big pass rush. He just got a little early jump on it. Now what happened is when Benson moved, then they blew the whistle. So what happened is that play wouldn't have counted, so then they let the clock go. So Ben Drath, referee, tells him, please put five minutes back on the clock. Five seconds. Five seconds, yeah. Yeah, if you put five minutes back, geez, that would be, you could <laughs> have another half a quarter. That's the first penalty of the day. So we still have 36 seconds remaining. It's second down and 15. The ball's on the 19. Sam got Manuel a Bobby Johnson out of bounds inside the five. It's a catch. Frazier was back there. That was great timing there. Phil Sims just got the ball and immediately just released it. Watch him. He, he, he takes the ball one, two, three, and just goes right up there. Johnson isn't ready yet, isn't open, throws it over, leads him. I'll tell you, that, that was quite a catch. He just caught that right over his head. Had his feet in. I don't know if his feet were in or not. <laughs> he did a good job of getting his head out of the way to catch the ball. I don't think his feet were close. in. On first down, Sims goes again. Oh, he almost had a touchdown. It was picked off, I believe, by Frazier, but he was out of bounds. We almost had a lot of things on that thing. As you say, we almost had a touchdown. We almost had a pickoff, and we ended up with an incomplete pass. But it was the same type of thing, just a timing pass out there. This is what Sims is doing now, getting the shorter drop, the quicker release, just getting the ball out there. That was right in Bobby Johnson's hands. Woo! Morris is back in the game. The Giants are out of timeouts. So they pretty much got to put it up, although with Morris in there, I don't know. Hassel back in motion. Sims back to throw. Throwing for Hasselbeck. High over his head, way out of the end zone. Mike Richardson was back there, number 27, with Hasselbeck. That was a smart thing by Phil Sims on that play. He just threw it away. They only had one man in the pattern, Don Hasselbeck, and he wasn't open, so Sims just threw it out of the end zone. So the, they get one more shot here at the end zone. Their defense is tough in this area, as that graphic would indicate. 22 seconds, it's third and goal. Manuel in motion. And back quick for the corner and over the head of Bobby Johnson. And now you got to go for the field goal. They have to go for the field goal, but I think they established a couple of things, obviously. One, they had a pretty good run on it. They had a good move. They're going to get down there and get a field goal here. The other thing is maybe shorten your drop, maybe get rid of the ball quicker because they did have some success with that. Schubert, who had some problems last week, from 19 yards away with Rutledge holding. No good. Off the upright. It hits the upright. And that fires those bears up, and that field goal kicking has to come back to haunt the Giants. Last week, Eric Schuber was one out of four. That's just, I know you don't like to say chip shot, and you don't like to say gimme, but that was close. He just went boop and hit the upright. That's the old hook job. Like an extra point. Watch it. It's right there in the left hash. So he has to kick it a little inside. He just kicks it straight up the thing. It's the upright, doink, bounce right out. Sometimes if those things bounce right, they can hit the upright and bounce in. Mike. Mike gave that a triple pump. I mean, when you get that close, they're supposed to make it. You give a triple pump, pump, pump. When you miss it, you don't give it any pumps. Just take your helmet off. 
and look down. 11 seconds remaining. That's out of timeouts. The Bears will be content just to run it out. Take that 7 0 lead to the dressing room at the half. Dominated by defense, and that's what everyone thought. Bears 7, and the Giants nothing at the end of one at Soldier Field in Chicago. We're at the half. Ready to go with the second half just about, with the Bears leading at 7 nothing. Statistically, it's been dominated by the Bears. The Giants with only three first downs. Chicago with seven. Total yards, 145 to 78. One turnover, the fumble by Carpenter. And the time of possession, 1935 to 1025. But the key touchdown, the touchdown, was most unusual. Well, and that's one thing that doesn't show up in the statistics is that when giant punter Sean Landetta went back to punt he just missed the ball and of course the Bears that's how they got their one touchdown the word on Jim Burt is that uh, he suffered a concussion uh, when he took him when they took him out in the first half when he got sandwiched on that play and uh, we'll just have to wait and see it as to whether he'll come back or not it's like they're still talking to him he is questionable at best I'm sure the Giants, as we see Phil Sims here, getting ready to, to go out there this next time, I'm sure that they've talked about that pass protection, the things that we just talked about, Otis Wilson and Dent and the stunts and so on, because I think if he has time, he can get guys open, and guys can get open. But in the first half, until just before half, he really didn't have any time to do it. Well, they had no yards passing, as you pointed out. Joe Morris, by the way, suffered a bruised shoulder but he is ready to play Schubert has the ball blow off the tee the Giants will have the wind at their back in the third quarter well you know the other thing that doesn't show in those halftime statistics is that Eric Schubert missed a field goal just before half right I think that fired the Bears up and I think that could have demoralize the Giants a little Willie Gaunt and Dennis Gentry back deep the Bears. This will be caught at the one-yard line. Well, it gets out to about the 23 before he's cut down by Robbie Jones. A return of 21 yards. 7-0 the Bears. Temperature at the game's beginning was 12 degrees. The windshield factor was 13 below. McMahon, 7 out of 10 for 86 yards. Bears kept saying yesterday up at their training camp, they didn't practice yesterday, but they kept saying what a great week of practice they had in Atlanta. Burt is not in. Jerome Sally. This is Peyton. And Peyton rumbles for a first down. Sally made the stop. Peyton got 12. But one thing, Jim Burt, you know, when, when they do play Jerome Sally, he's more of the pass nose tackle anyway, and Burt is a run nose tackle. Here they get good movement on Sally. They start with a double team, end up on a single, get a good push on him. And again, to run against a three-man line, you have to get backward movement on that nose tackle. Then you do, then you can find a soft spot in the defense. Peyton got the first down. Work again as well as this time he only got a couple. Kenny Hill came up to fill the hole. You know, talking about backward movement on the nose tackle and seeing the nose tackle there, Jim Burke. This Jay Hilgenberg, the center of the Bears, is one of the, the best blocking centers that I've seen in a long time. We watched him in some, some film, we've done some games of theirs, and I haven't yet seen the guy miss a block. I yet. don't think I have either. He's one of those guys, free agent, sort of a self-made guy. Well, he was. He, you know, he, he lifted the weights. He made himself big, made himself strong. They give again to Peyton, and there's nothing there. Jerome Sally this time. 
That'll make it third and long. The fans are getting restless here. They say, I like this center play. I like this nose tackle play. I like those guys in the pits. They're doing that stuff and grunting and groaning and running, but we want to see some passing. Let's throw the ball, McMahon. Or Ditka, let's call a pass. Third and six. The Bears at their own 39. And they will put it up. Assuming they have time, of course. wide open nobody within 30 yards of Gentry and he's out of bounds at the giant 21 Herb Welch knocked him out of bounds but nobody was close to it not even in the picture and that's the guy that Jim McMahon said on those passing downs that he's gonna look for him. he said I have to get the ball to Dennis Gentry he comes in we'll see him he started here came in motion here he is here See, now they have the coverage, but no one is coming with Gentry. He comes out here, catches a ball out here all alone. See, they lose him. See, he's coming in motion here, and he stops. Now watch him. They have man-to-man, man-to-man. No one covers Gentry. Wide open out here. They had him covered on the other side, and when he came in motion, no one came with him, nor did anyone pick him up on this side. First and ten for the Bears. It's struck quickly. McMahon going to work again to McKenna. Incomplete. Terry Kennard was in, coming in the direction of the intended receiver. The ball was there. McMahon said the only thing he's worried about with those gloves that he throws more spirals and he throws better passes now with them than he does without them. He says his guys may not be able to adjust <laughs> to spiral. Not used to it. But he throws floaters, end yep. over enders. You know, flopping ducks and here you throw a spiral, they don't know what to do with it. Second and ten. <laughs> McMahon has got some room. And he's got a man in the end zone. It was Marjoram. And he had a step or two. That's a tough pass to throw running like that. Well, it's a play that Jim McMahon had on his mind because he was telling us about Marjorie. He said down inside the 20, he said Ken Marjorie is the best receiver we have. So because no matter what the what the defense is doing, he'll find an area, he'll get an opening. And then of course he always said that they're on the same wavelength. <laughs> I like that. You know, if something goes wrong, whack yourself in the head. Right. Then, 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 you know, I like, you know, some guys go, oh, heck, or shoot or something. But boom, and you go, whack, whack, hit yourself in the head, and that shakes some cobwebs and stuff out. Some guys point fingers at the other guys. <laughs> Here comes Gentry in motion again. McMahon. Incomplete. Out of bounds. McKinnon, I believe, was the intended receiver. And Kevin Butler will come on again. Well, McMahon has his passing back now. He threw a he threw an end over ender duck out there. That, that, <laughs> that thing had no spiral on it whatsoever. I think he was looking again for Gentry. Couldn't find anything. And I think he just threw it away. Butler will be 38 yards away this time. Fuller holding. He missed twice already. for three he missed it to the left then the Giants take over with 12 11 left to play in the third quarter downtown Chicago not far away from Soldier Field cold and clear and seven nothing Giants start from their own 21, first and 10, third quarter. And let's see if they have indeed figured out a way to block this bear defense. Well, one of the things they do, that they've inserted Maurice Carthon at the fullback position. He, of course, is an excellent blocker. They give to Morris. Morris is here in the backfield by Richard Dent. Well, they were trying to run, put Joe Morris over on the strong side run back to the weak side 
But again, see, here's Dent lined up wide here. He just starts his charge. He just beats the block and gets Joe Moran. But again, they aren't going to run or pass until they get this guy blocked. This guy's making He's already all pro. You don't have to help him anymore. He got it. Led Let the league. Goes. Led the league in sacks during the year. Sims back to throw. He did have a little bit of time. Lionel Manuel, the intended receiver, Mike Richardson, was with him step for step. You know, I think that uh, key word you said is a little bit of time. You know, sometimes <laughs> the guys get there, sometimes they hit you, sometimes they're hanging on you, and sometimes they're breathing on you. Now that one was just a breath deal. They were just breathing on him, but they were getting there. That would probably be classified as a hurry. Sims four out of 14. Third down and 11. Blitz again. Single carry. And Otis Wilson. And they're all over Phil Sim. Now that time they brought them all. Again, they're in that fake diamond. The guy that gets here is single carry. But they have the three linemen. They usually play four linemen in that situation. But Singletary comes straight up the middle. No one picks him up. Otis Wilson comes from the outside. And there's Hampton on top. Landetta back in his own end zone. End over end kick. Or they go field it at midfield. Gets to the giant 41. The Bears will have it in good shape. 41-yard punt by Lantetta. Ortego brought it back nine yards. The Bears will take over. They love that defense. Yeah, they should. And the, the Giants sideline is still trying to figure it out. Again, it's that fake diamond. The three defensive linemen where they usually use four. Linebackers on either side, Singletary in the middle with the linebacker Blitzen. Jim Burt is back. Suri and Peyton operate behind McMahon. <laughs> to Suri. <laughs> Suri will get about seven yards. Harry Carson tripped him up. Hey, one thing I think I think one thing about this bear offensive team is when you get in a game where you have to run or you're going to run, they have the two perfect backs. They have Walter Payton, the best in the game, and then they have a Matt Suey, who one will block for him, and two, if you start keying Payton too strongly, he can hit those plays straight ahead and pick a hole. And of course Payton is an excellent blocker himself. And Suey again. To the 25, first down Bears, Carson and Hill on the stop, but Suey got nine. Well, that's the type of stuff they start doing to you. They, if Suey carries the ball, it's going to be this type of stuff, just straight ahead. Guards fire out, center fire out, hat on hat they call it, and then Suey just find a soft spot, take that ball straight up and get the first down. Now, he reminds me a lot of a guy that I used to have, Pete Banizak, the guy that you, you look at him and you think he can't do anything, but you add it up and he can do just about everything. From the 25, they again get to Suey. And from the outside comes Kenny Hill to take him down after he got a couple. Well, that's the first thing you do. When teams start running on you and you're playing seven men, you know, three linemen, four linebackers, to get that eighth guy, you add the strong safety. And you get him up tighter and tighter and tighter that time, Kenny Hill was on the line of scrimmage. Giants have only managed 29 yards running. The Bears, 92. They're rolling with it right now.
right there. That had to be an audible. McMahon saw something. I think it was a giant corners up tight, and he caught an all. He called an audible 767. And that's when he saw tight coverage. He wanted to go to work to Willie Galt, get the big one. That brings up a third and eight situation. That was good defense there by Perry Williams. He had position on him. Galt got inside him, then tried to go back to the corner, and Perry Williams didn't let him. Third down. Gentry in motion. Flag is down. In the end zone, touchdown. Dennis McKinnon came up with the ball in the end zone. However, there was a flag on the play. I'm sure the flag is against the Giants, Pat. Byron Hunt jumped off sides. So that touchdown will stay, I'm sure. Defense offside. 57. Touchdown. Three yards from McMahon to McKinnon. And the Bears try to make it 14 nothing. Butler's extra point is good. 8.48 left to play in the third quarter. Chicago 14. The Giants nothing. Five plays, 41 yards. Oh, when, when McMahon saw Byron Hunt jump off sides, he knew he had a free shot. Just throw it up. If you get it, you got a touchdown. He did get it to McKinnon. If you don't, then you, you get to play over again. Watch McKinnon here. You know, the Bears have had a little success in their passing game, going and then slowing up, and then coming back as McKinnon does there. That has to be planned. They've been doing that too many times today where they start up the field, get the defensive guy running, and then McMahon throws it short. Actually, it wasn't bad coverage by Patterson. McMahon will do a little celebrating for you. Well, you know, he celebrates with his head, too. He'll go paint to paint with a helmet. They do a little headbutting. That's part of the celebration. I think McMahon's fantasy is to really to be like an offensive lineman, a guard, or one of those guys, and a wrestler. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the case. He said he wasn't supposed to wear that headband. He said the commissioner didn't want him to. Hasselbeck on the return gets outside the 40. Sims back to throw, has some time, gets it out to Carpenter. Otis Wilson with him. One of the things that Fincic was saying, Gary Fincic was saying yesterday about what's great about playing defense for Buddy Ryan is that he's not married to his game plan. He's willing to change during the course of a game. Well, what he does, he comes in and he has a lot of things they can do. They work and they see what's going and then they just keep doing it. And that's what they've been doing today. Second down for the Giants. Sims back to throw again. Down the middle. And it intended for Bavaro. Incomplete. Wilbur Marshall. It is kind of funny, though, here in this series, when the Bears took the 14-point lead now, they're not blitzing as much. It's only, been a, it's only been a couple of plays, but they're kind of, you know, dropping off. There goes the fridge. Done a little work today. Third down. A short blitz this time. Sims for McConkey. Complete. Leslie Frazier, the defender. I don't know if 
those gloves are bothering Sims or not. Steve McMichael, who had a knee problem, might have aggravated it. I think the thing that's bothering Sims more in the gloves is that rush. I really do. They haven't figured it out. They haven't been able to block it solidly. He's had to throw before he's ready to, and I think that's bothering him more in the gloves. Or the flu that he had last night. That could be. Then it has time. Gets off a good punt. Or to go. Feels it. At his own six-yard line. Terry Kennard was the first man down. They mark it at the seven. 47-yard punt, no return. And the Bears will have it back at their own seven-yard line. 7.43 left third quarter. At Soldier Field in Chicago, Pat Summerall and John Madden. Bears leading 14-0. They have the ball at their own seven. McMahon and Peyton asking for quiet. Suey, hammered by Carson. Pickup of about three. Well, one thing, you know, the Giants have to think here, Pat, that just before half, this is the position they had the Bears in. They stopped them, and then they forced them to punt into the wind, and they were able to move the ball down. Although they, they dropped the ball in the end zone for a touchdown, and then they missed the field goal. At least that was the closest they've come all day. They haven't been able to do much. Suey got four, second and six. Now it's Peyton up the middle. Peyton breaks out of the pack and gets up to the 20. Terry Kennard made the tackle, but Peyton got a bear first down. It looked like Mike Ditka says, I like that. You know, coaches like Mike Ditka like to see running, and they like to see it be successful, and they like to see it get first down. Then when it is, it looked like he just took a little spit and told the coach next to him, keep doing that. I like that. That's good. <laughs> 11 first downs for Chicago. Three for New York. It's Peyton again. Carl Banks finally stopped him. You know, as a coach, there's nothing more comfortable than that. But to have a lead... Be at home, be in a playoff game, and be able to run. Those are the three best feelings you can have. You're in the playoff game, you're at home, you got Walter Payton like this, and you're able to run. They cut Carl Banks down, that got a little soft corner for him, and Walter Payton doesn't need much more than that. Less than six minutes left now in the third quarter. Bears leading 14-0. Again, Peyton. Another bear first down. Lawrence Taylor made the stop. But a gain of five looks like Van Horn might have stubbed a finger or something. They just got one of those numbers in there, but the Bears did something there that they don't do an awful lot of. That's going to the one back offense, where they just had Walter Payton back there as a one back, and he just ran a little pick a hole on him. I think the Bears are starting to uh, clutch it down a little here. They're just running out the clock. Right. They've got it down to five minutes left in the third quarter now. 369! They hit hard this time. Harry Carson and Carl Banks. I think they started saying, well, they've shown what they're going to do. They're just going to run the ball out of here. I think the Bears, obviously, with a 14-point lead, would like to run the rest of the game, if not just this quarter, while they're going into the win. Right. Second down and 10. No game. Bolt and McKinnon both are wide left. They give again to Peyton. He's hit behind the line by George Martin. Lawrence Taylor also involved, as was Carl Banks again. Hey, the giant defense is a very strong defense against the run when they know you're going to run. I think they started, they were playing both, and then they just started tightening it up, tightening it up, tightening it up. And now two runs didn't gain anything, and they have third in the whole deal here. 
Only one back, in fact, ran for 100 yards against the Giants, and that was Eric Dickerson, who did it yesterday to the Cowboys. We got about two or three games worth yesterday. Yes, it did. McMahon throws outside. Incomplete. Intended this time for Peyton, covered by Taylor. So they got the matchup they wanted. That's not a bad matchup. You know, if you had to start a team, those wouldn't be two bad guys to do it with. You take Walter Payton for the offense and Lawrence Taylor for the defense. Wouldn't be a bad deal. Surely wouldn't. Buford will punt from about his own 20-yard line. McConkey standing back at the Giant with the neighborhood of the 30. Bears really are working this clock. Aren't they? Except it's not running. Kick it, kick it. Low Stop. kick. Conkey lets it bounce wisely. And it takes a bear bounce. They'll down it at the giant 32. Cliff Thrift. Down to do the job. Punt of 35 yards. So the Giants take over with 321 remaining in the third quarter, trailing by 14. 321 left. First down, Giants, their own 32. Sims back to pass. Gets it out to Carpenter. Carpenter out of bounds after a gain of five. This could could be the Giant, the Giants' last shot at the end zone with the wind at their back. And it's still blowing. I think so. And I think down 14 and nothing, they have to think that way, that they really have three minutes and 15 seconds to get one score, and that's with the win and passing, and then hope they can do that and then get another against the win, maybe going back to some more running. Adams in the backfield now with Morris. With Carpenter, sorry. And down goes Sims again. Richard Dent. Four times, four times, Sims has been sacked. Yeah, that was the thing that they have to be able to handle. Here's Dent. Refrigerator starts this way. Dent loops and comes right up the middle and gets Sims there. What you see starts out here, 95. Fridge starts to the outside. Dent starts to the inside. No one picks him up right there into Sims. I tell you, that has been the headache and the nightmare for the Giants all day today. No sacks by the Giants. Four by the Bears. Here comes a blitz against Sims and Dewerson. It's intended for McConkey, and it's incomplete. And they just can't move it. Landetta back to punt. Ortigo will field it at the 30. We're down at the 35. Kenny Hill down quickly. 43-yard punt, 5-yard return. The Bears take over. That summer all, John Madden. Two and a half minutes left. To play in the third quarter. The winner of this game to play the Rams. There are no swimmers out there today, huh? No. Nope. A lot of ice out in Lake Michigan. See if the Bears continue with that same philosophy. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they'll run to get into the fourth quarter. McKinnon comes in motion. And it's Peyton to the left. Hit by Marshall in the backfield. Chased out of bounds by Banks. Or a loss of a couple. Lawrence Taylor hit Banks after that telling him good play. And Banks spun around like he thought it was one of the Bears. Lawrence Taylor's the policeman out there taking care of the deal. One thing Bill Parcells said that he instructed his team when the 
Walter Payton runs on the sideline, hit him. He said, you see him so many times, he runs on that sideline, and guys let up, and then Payton just dips his shoulder and runs right by him. That's what Carl Banks was doing there. He said, my coach told me, hit him. And then Taylor hits Banks, and Banks goes, who hit me? Okay. Oh, if he hits back, McMahon has a man wide open. It's Tim Reitman, the tight end, Reitman to the 20. Caught by Kenny Hill. That's the second time McMahon has had a receiver with no defender within 15 or 20 yards. Yeah, Tim, Tim Reitman, of course they got him from the bear, from the USFL this year as the end guy right here. Comes off, no one covers him right in here. He's all alone and McMahon pops him. Watch him come off the line. The safety works out, the other safety works to the other side, and there's Reitman right in the middle, all by himself. That's two times that there had to be some kind of mistake in coverage, don't you think? Well, Kenny Hill, you would think the strong safety would be there, but he worked out to the flanker, probably trying to help on, on ball. McKinnon, touchdown. His second of the day. Butler for the extra point. Twenty-one nothing. He doesn't get the blitz. He's watching McKinnon all right, all the way. McKinnon runs a, a quick post on Elvis Patterson, and he gets a beat down there. Patterson was up tight in a jam, it looked like. See how close he is? He gives him a little move to the outside, then puts his left hand, pushes him to the outside, comes back underneath, and McMahon hits him right there. Watch McMahon now, his celebration. Like I said, he always celebrates with his head. I mean, you get your hands up first, then you see if you can go find the guy to bump heads with. Where's the guy? 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 There's a guy. Now get him, but yeah, end There you go. With Van Horn. You got to go look a long time to get a guy, and then yeah. you find a whole bunch of guys, and then you end up, boink, but I knew he would like to have been an offensive lineman. Butler's kickoff is fielded by Tony Galbraith. A return of 18 by Galbraith. Patterson, you're right, was up crowding McKinnon, and once he got past him, McMahon had the ball in there. Did you see the move that McKinnon made? It was one of those defensive moves. They call it a swim where he hit him with his left hand, pushed him with his left hand, then brought his right hand over like this. And then he was beyond him. Giants take over at their own 39. First and 10. Adams and Carpenter in the backfield. Sims has got to throw it in a hurry and go. Mark Bavaro. Pickup of about eight. It's incomplete. Singletary was with Bavaro. You don't score too many points when you're minus 14 in total yards, do you? Well, you know, you can look at that either way. The giant offense is minus 14, but the way that this Bear defense is playing, they've caused minus 14. Second and 10. Handoff 
half is to Morris. And he only gets a couple. William Perry. Well, you know, that's a that's a good thing with Perry playing next to Dent. Dent on that play, Dent can get up the field a little more. Dent can go more for the for the quarterback, and Perry, the big guy, he just kind of hangs around that line of scrimmage and he picks up what's flopping around there. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Bears 21, the Giants nothing. One more quarter left. Third and seven. Now the Giants go against the wind. Adams had it and lost it. And now the Bears surround it. Incomplete. Three first downs for the Giants. 15 for the Bears. Yeah, the, Giant, the, the Bears just started out that pressure defense, that blitz, that dent and coming and hanging on Sims. And the Giant pass offense or runoff just couldn't get on track and is yet to get on track. Lantetta looking into the sun and against the wind. Or to go back deep for the Bears. <laughs> or to go makes the fair catch. Of 29 yards. And the Bear offensive unit comes back on the field. 1446 left to play. They said they had an excellent week of practice in Atlanta, particularly Dennis McKinnon. And it, it shows. Well, you know, the one thing about McKinnon and some of the other guys like McMichael and Hampton had bad knees. They were just glad to get off artificial surface and to be able to get down there in, uh, in Georgia at the Falcons practice field and practice on grass. So it really brought back their, their life in their legs. Calvin Thomas in the game with Peyton. <laughs> Harry Carson and Terry Kennard. <laughs> In the direction of Emory Moorhead, he was pressured by Leonard Marshall. See, McMahon has has the, the name in the front of that helmet. See there, Bears. Like, if you ever forget who you're playing for, you know what I mean? If right. you don't know, like, you play for the Eagles or the Redskins or who, you can just look at your helmet. This bears right there. Mad at himself again. You know, he said he learned something. He used to face his teammates when he got mad. They all thought they were getting mad at him. So now he turns his back when he gets mad. Gentry is the move. Flag is down. McMahon in the direction of Gentry. I believe the Giants jumped off sides. Uh, they, they did. And then George Martin jumped on McMahon after he threw the ball, or at the time he threw the ball. Some of them were complaining it was a late hit of McMahon. Some were saying it was offside. Offside, number 54, five yards, third down. And he hadn't. That's just the second penalty of the game. That's sort of, sort of surprising, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's, I think there were a couple other penalties that probably weren't accepted, but it, it has been a, a clean game, and I'm, I'm sure that it's an emotional game and a very intense game, but it doesn't feel that way from here to me. I agree with you. It seemed like the Giants were a lot more intense last week against the 49ers. Maybe that took something out of them. I think it did. Calvin Thomas will get the first down, I believe, on that second bounce. Lawrence Taylor hit him. But he'll have the first down. And over the sticks. A gain of two. What did he do? Did he have it the first time? I mean, he didn't have it, then he bounced for it, huh? What did it look like? He'll bounce for the first down. 16 to 3. That's up to date. 
Now the Bears have had these Giants pretty well contained for most of the day. They put a rope around them and haven't loosened it up. Thomas again over the left side. Stopped by McGriff. Gain of four. You know, I know what McMahon's thinking. You know, he likes to throw the ball. I mean, if he if he could call his plays, he would probably throw, oh, four out of every five or so. And then when he runs, he really doesn't like that part of it. But it's, he's a team player and likes to do it. But I'm sure somewhere along the way, he's going to say, hey, you see what happened when we started to throw? Look, we can score. Boom, boom, boom. We don't have to run all the time. Second down and seven. No flag hit by Kenny Hill. I'll tell you, that one could cause a rumble. That really could. When you hit the other team's quarterback on his bench, you're lucky to come out of there on that deal. I'm surprised at that. I'm surprised that, uh, watch Kenny Hill there. McMahon gets out of bounds. Hits him out. He just tackled him, I guess, but that was awfully close. Well, someone didn't jump on Kenny Hill. That usually happens. He almost went under the hot bench. There were some guys who were thinking about it, but they saw the official there, and instead of jumping on Kenny Hill, they pointed it. Pointed to him. Pointed him out to the official. Nothing happened, though. Third and four. Bears leading 21-0. The Gentry just overthrown. Kenny Hill was the defender. You know, in that formation on third down on their sub-formation, I think Dennis Gentry is probably their number one receiver, their primary receiver. He can make some things happen. Well, they want to get the ball in his hands. He's a halfback, and of course, playing behind Walter Payton, he doesn't get to run much, but he goes in on that passing formation, and that's one way they can get the ball to him. Buford to punt, Akonke back deep. Stop. There was a clip by Terry Kennard. Or illegal block above the waist in the back. Whatever they call it. Terry Kennard's been having a bad second half here. He's going to get penalized on this play. Earlier on that touchdown to McKinnon. He could have made a tackle down there. Number 43. 10-yard penalty. Terry Kennard really hasn't been doing some of the things that have to be done in the championship game. 11.56 left to play. Soldier Field, the home of the Bears. The delighted sellout crowd today as the Bears lead it 21-0. What was that shot from? Is that from a blimp or a helicopter? What's that deal out there? That would be someone flying and taking pictures down. It uh, would be a tough day for the blimp. <laughs> Why? It's windy. Adams and Carpenter. Brian Sims, who retreats. Adams. Outside the 35 to about the 36 before he's taken down by Wilbur Marshall. A you know, gain of 25. One thing the Bears have been able, I mean, the Giants have been able to do is take a little advantage of Mike Singletary. Watch 50 here. He injured his knee a couple weeks ago, and he has a tough time getting out on that coverage against George Adam. Now, he's inside. He's trying to disguise it, but then he has to get out there. That's a tough thing to do. First down, Giants. Adams 
again to about the 45. Singletary on the stop this time. Singletary at that time said, okay, they're going to put Adams out there. If he's my guy, I'm going to go and try and get him as soon as I poss possibly can. You know, you talk about an intense guy. That Mike Singletary is one intense guy. And off the field, is just the opposite. Very much so. Jekyll Hyde deal. Here's that special defense. Sims up the middle. Mark Vivaro this time. That'll be enough for its first down. Dave Durson on the tackle. We got a couple guys hooked up in there. Yeah. I think they, they had their uh, face mask hooked up. That was Bart Oates and Otis Wilson. <laughs> I think they did. I think they went head to head, helmet to helmet, paint to paint. And the mask got the mask. That's something. Like two nice. guys got hooked up, can't get away from each other. A couple of things we've never seen before. I got this guy. Of course you got him. You're hooked. Sims to throw. As Bavaro. And he gets the first down very close to it. <laughs> With that last little lunge. Well, after that last little lunge, he had one more little push. Did you see that Gary Fencer was down there? He had the lunge. That got the first down. And then the, the push just told Fensick, hey, don't do that. But you lunge right here, he gets the first down. Now Fensick grabs the ball. Lunge and then he gives Fensick, doink. Sin going for Lionel Manuel. No flag. Mike Richardson on the coverage. I think these two corners of the Bears have done a good job because you think of the Lionel Manuel who's probably, the, not probably, he's the best receiver on the Giant team, their leading receiver this year, just came back off the IR last week. I don't think he's caught a pass. I think they put a blanket on him. I don't believe he's caught one either. I don't know that any wide receiver other than Bobby Johnson, I, I, I remember yeah. catching some, but I don't remember another wide receiver catching any ball right before the half. by Otis Wilson but a gain of 11 and another first down I tell you Mark, Mark Bavaro has been an, an outstanding tight end whether he's a rookie or not for this giant team and, you know he has done things he doesn't even know who he's playing against I mean he plays out there he took a shot that was a shot right in the head I don't know about that one I don't know about the legality but he just says something and walk back to the huddle get ready to play again we saw him walking off last night by himself, going to get a pizza. There's a blitz. There's Sims. That looks like the Giants might have gotten it. Perry was trying to pick it up, but Billy Ard came up with the recovery. A loss of nine. I'll tell you, this has been a tough thing, a tough day for Phil Sims. Here now, see in this in this bear defense, they line up the two linebackers, Marshall and Wilson, and they both come on this play to get to Sim. Usually Wilson comes from the outside and Marshall doesn't. Here you see Wilson's the outside, Marshall the inside guy, both coming. Neither one of them were blocked either. That's a big thing. The fact that they come is one thing, the fact they're not blocked, that's bigger than that. Second and 19, Benson backed out. That's the second time that's happened to Brad Benson. Start the 60 offense. I think Richard Dent has a little to do with that. I'll tell you, it's tough, especially when Dent takes that wide stance out there. In other words, he gets about two yards outside of you. You see how wide he is on Benson? Now, here's Benson, 60. He knows he has to get out there, you see? So he starts a little early. It's tough because the guy, you have to jump out, but yet be under control because Dent is so quick and he can get you moving running up the field and then come underneath you second down and 24 there's Dent 
Sims gets away from him. There's a penalty marker down. Pass is caught by Carpenter. But they're going the wrong way. I don't know how Phil Sims got away from Dent unless Dent just didn't wrap his arms. He came free from his backside. That's the toughest place to get a, a, a pass rush from. The flag was thrown way down the field. Sims is indicating that it's against the Bears. That would be the first Bear penalty. Watch Dent here again. You see how he starts up the field, and with his speed, he just runs right around Brad Benson. Then he gets his arms around Sims, and Sims spun out of that deal. Then says, oh, I hate that. 79 was lined up in the neutral zone. Defensive Five line penalty. hate to Second run down. that far and not get the sack. Someone was lined up in the neutral zone. I thought he said 78. It couldn't be 78. If it's a 70, it has to be either 6 or 2. Unless it was 99. It could have been 99. It could have been Hampton. They got a lot of big guys that can line up. You know, like, I mean, Hampton, the Refridge, and those guys, they could line up, like, on sides, in the neutral zone, and in the giant huddle. I don't think the, the word neutral is in the category of any of those bare defender, defensive players. Second down still. Here comes the blitz again. Here's the reverse. Richard Dent played it about as well as it can be played. Minus 10. I, think, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's any... I think if they pick a defensive player of the game, it'll be Dent. Watch, because he has a blitz inside of him, he has the outside contained. The blocker comes out. He looks. Oh, he looked at the blocker. He says, it's Phil Sim. Take him on. Boom, boom, boom. Play him off. Make the tackle. Dent's having a lot of good. I mean, he's oh. getting sacks. He's getting quarterbacks trying to block him. Reverses. Look at all those things. Now it's third down. 31 yards needed for the first down. Sam gets it to McConkey, and McConkey is tossed around in the middle of about five bear tacklers, including Mike Singletary. 550 now left to play. Hey, and he held on to that. McConkey, he's going to get hit. He's going to catch a post here, then he's going to get hit. First by Gary Fensick. Watch McConkey now. Here's Fensick's going to come up right there, doink. And then he's going to get hit from the backside right there by Singletary. I tell you that. And he held on to that thing. He only weighs about 165 pounds. Look, he got rib stuff, flak jackets, extra equipment hanging out the back there. Power pack. Fensick. Jumped up the middle and got to Sims. Six sacks. A offensive time, that He started back, came up, came up, ended right up in the line of scrimmage. They couldn't block it. He's a wannabe. <laughs> Fensick says, I like that. Let me do that. Watch, here's Fensick here. He's going to start up, start up, start up, right into here, wiggle wagon, and then go doink, catch him before he gets back. Watch him. He starts there, starts there, starts there. I got him. Snap the ball. Snap it, snap it, snap it. There I go. Boom. I got him before you can get me. Five oh nine left to play. The Bears... Shutting out the Giants. Man, shut out the Cowboys. Here's Peyton. With some room. Gary Reasons stopped Peyton after he picked up eight yards. One thing about Peyton, you know, he's been running <clears throat> that sweep for so long that you learn patience. That time his right guard, Tom Thayer, was pulling out to the left. He waited and waited for Thayer to get in front of him, let him get his block, 
and then boom, he turns up and picks up his seven yard. Some backs want to get out there so quickly that they leave their blockers. And a guy like Logan Payton always knows where his blockers are and uses them. When he gets ready to make his move, he makes it in a hurry. Second and two. This is Payton again. Looks like he might be a yard shy of the first down. A little circus breaks out. Taylor and Reitman. I think that's tough. You know what happened? You, you know, you see in the at the end of a game in the fourth quarter of a playoff game, you've gone so far, so long, and it's ended. This is the end. It's not until next year. And sometimes frustration sneaks in. You, know, you think that's what that is. I don't know. You know, the play's over. That's no big deal. McMahon made a quick trip over to the sideline to talk with his offensive coordinator, Eddie Hughes, and Ditkin. Now they're out of the huddle. Payton steps to the outside. Gets a block from McKinnon. And gets the first down. Kenny Hill on the stop. Payton got seven. Taylor into a little shouting match with some of the Bear players. I think it was Marjoram he was yelling at. I think it was Marjoram was probably one of the guys, and then it got to be where it was the whole Bear sideline, and I think he was giving it to any one of them that wanted it. Anyone who wants to listen can have a little of that. But I tell you, it does get frustrating. Oh, you know, sure. It's the end of the year. It's your last game. And you get in this big 21 and not much you can do about it now. Fake is to Peyton. McMahon keeps it. Now slides to the ground. As Taylor was right where he was supposed to be. Now, I don't know <clears throat> that a coach called that play. I can't believe that you have a quarterback like Jim McMahon who has had some injury, who has had some problems, and would run a naked bootleg when you're ahead 21 to nothing with a little over two minutes to go in the game. You've got to think about who it is you're talking about. Well, you know, McMahon could have thought that he saw something. You know, I saw something there. <laughs> yeah. They were all going the other way. I, I, I saw, I could have walked in, I think. slips down. Kenny Hill makes sure that he stayed down. Yeah, Kenny Hill was coming on a blitz, and a strong safety blitz. Two minutes left to play. Bears will entertain the Rams. Third down and long. Hey, one thing I think that this Bear defense showed today, that if you're going to attack him, if you're going to have a chance against him, you better bring more than a running game. You better bring a little passing game, and with that passing game, you better bring a lot of pass protection. That was Sui who just made the move. Two minutes to go. And off pace. Straight ahead for maybe a yard. Jim Burton was the first player in white. Yeah, they didn't get any movement on the nose tackle on that play. Nope. But, uh, you know, with all the things that the Bears do, I mean, the Bears defense and McMahon and Peyton and so on, there's another group, this offensive line, yep. has really done a good job for them all year. I mean, not only Hildenberg, we talked about Jim Coverts in the uh, Pro Bowl, Mark Bortz, Tom Thayer, Keith Van Horn. They've all really done a good job. This is a fine offensive line. The Giants took this time out. They have two remaining. Bears have a, a lot of players going to the Pro Bowl. Peyton Hampton, Singletary, Richard Dent, who's had an outstanding day today. Otis Wilson, Covert, McMahon, the center, Hilgenberg, and Dave Dewerson. Five of them making their first appearance. Man smiling, he's probably telling a joke or something. 
What he's talking about is they're going to have to go down to uh, Atlanta again next week. They're down to Swanee. He said that place is so quiet down there you couldn't get in trouble if you wanted to. Yeah, talking about the offensive linemen, of course, their, their coach is Dick Stanfell, who was one of the NFL all-time great offensive linemen himself, and he wanted us to wish his, his mother a happy birthday, his mother Ann, who's 92 years old. But she's probably celebrating this pair victory right now. I'll bet. Bears are going to down it inside the giant 10, now inside the 5. And the wind, I think, blew it down to about the one. 53-yard punt. Dennis Gentry was the man down to down it. 21-0 the Bears. So that's the first down. Sims is hit again. But he gets it down to Byron Williams. Down to about the Bear 30. You know, that may be the way to do it. I mean, it's it's too much too late, but maybe the Rams learned something here. Maybe you you do when you're going into the wind. You still throw it. Maybe you just keep it a little lower, and maybe you throw it short and let your guy come back to him. That's just what the Giants did now. Again, it's too late, but it's what the Bears have been doing. Sims is hit just as he lets it go to Lionel Manuel, and it's incomplete. There's Keith Van Horn. You know, Keith Van Horn played at USC for John Robinson. In fact, when we were talking to him in the locker room yesterday, he asked about John. I said, well, he's they win, fine. he'll be doing fine. Then he went on and won, and now he doesn't have to ask. You'll be seeing him next week right here, live in Soldier Field. 16 seconds left to play as Sims just fires it into the air. Lionel Manuel was the closest giant, but Sims, again, had no time. Lionel Manuel thought he was going to do some work out there. Phil Sims didn't have time to do any work. Eleven seconds left now. It'll be a tough trip back to New York. Well, the Giants had a good year, yeah, and, they they, and they played as well last week against the 49ers as I had seen him. And then I just think it's tough. I mean, it's tough to do it and then come back and do it again, especially when the other guys of the Bears were the best team in football. Bobby Johnson, uh, Byron Williams, the intended receiver. Six seconds left. The Bears appear to have shut out the Giants. This crowd is loving it. One time, had some time. Incomplete. And that's it. The Bears shut out the Giants, 21-0. They will entertain the Rams right here at Soldier Field next Sunday.
team they had beaten to win a championship in 1963. This is not the end of the road. I mean, there's work to be done. There's miles to go. That's the way the phone goes. We've got a little way to go yet. And I tell you, it's going to get better. So like I said, the, the best is yet to come. It really is. The best was still to come. But it would have been hard convincing the Giants who fell to Chicago in frozen soldier feet. They discovered that these bad news bears could be bad weather bears as well. The Giants started off quickly, moving 45 yards on their first four plays of this NFC Divisional Playoff game. But when the Bears forced and recovered number 26 Rob Carpenter's fumble, this promising drive ended up in the deep three. First period saw the Giants continue to walk through a winter blunderland, and when Sean Landetta kicked a minus five-yard punt, number 23 Sean Gale returned it for a touchdown. Landetta would later claim that his shank was caused by a gust of wind, but another look at the play suggests that the punter may have been unnerved by the heavily stacked left side of the Chicago run. Unnerved enough to drop the ball low and nose down for his instant. While Dale recorded the shortest punt return for a touchdown in NFL playoff history, Bill Sims suffered through one of the longest afternoons in postseason hours. Sims was sacked six times, and his principal nemesis was number 95, Richard Dent, who registered three and a half of those sacks. Chicago's front line stunned off, and when Dent ran loop, Kyle Nelson, number 63, could not get over to block Dent quickly enough to prevent the sack. were in Sims face the entire game as the Giants failed to make a first down in nine of their first 11 possessions. It took a while for Mike Ditka's offense to get on track too, but in the second half the Bears were able to solve New York's defense and extend their 7-0 halftime lead. Chicago's offensive line of Covert, Sports, Hilgenberg, Bayer, and Van Horn showed intimidating New York defenders such as Lawrence Taylor, number 56, that when push comes to shove, they could be pretty intimidating too. Jim McMahon was never sacked in the contest, and although he completed only four passes over the final two periods, a pair of them accounted for touchdowns, both by Dennis McKinnon. Knowing Sims now had no choice but to pass constantly, Chicago blitzed frequently. Here, number 50, Mike Singletary, recorded an easy set. The Giants were simply not equal to the task of thwarting these blitzes, as number 30, Tony Galbraith, missed block on Gary Fenton, number 45, demonstrated. Defense Chicago style helped earn the victory. Now the Bears were approaching the gun lap in the race to Super Bowl 20. Their last hurdle, the Los Angeles Rams.